Regardless of height, hairstyle, coloration or name, there are very few animals as clumsy as the penguin. But what these relatable flightless birds lack in terrestrial prowess, they more than make up for in aquatic expertise. Underneath the surface, their streamlined bodies and powerful flippers help them hunt with impressive agility and travel long distances with ease. Penguins are subject to a handful of spectacular colour aberrations and range considerably in size and appearance from the fairy or little penguin of New Zealand through the colourful crested and equally eye-catching banded groups all the way to Antarctica's pride and joy, the Emperor. To begin our journey into the world of penguins, we need to travel to a set of islands in the South Atlantic to view one of the greatest spectacles of the natural world. As seabirds, penguins spend a great deal of their time in the water, often passing months at sea. All species, however, come ashore to breed and are well known for their enormous colonies, sometimes numbering millions of birds. The king penguin breeds on several sub-Antarctic islands between 45 and 60 degrees south, including South Georgia, where their colony is estimated to number over 200,000 birds. This beautiful island is teeming with wildlife, hosting four species of penguin and several species of seal to name but a few. King penguins are unique in their breeding cycle, which lasts 14 to 18 months, in comparison to the yearly cycle of most other species. This is due to the abnormally long time it takes chicks to reach independence, which occurs at 12 to 14 months of age, in comparison to the five months for emperor chicks and two to three months for most other species. Chicks are also quite striking, displaying thick down feathers that are brown in color in comparison to the black or gray feathers of many other species. More developed chicks are left in creches, which amount to large groups of young supervised by a small number of adults, while the majority of parents hunt for food. Amazingly, parents are able to locate their young, even in massive groups, by using vocalizations recognized by their chick. Before entering the water themselves, chicks will molt their down feathers, which are replaced by stiff, waterproof ones. Adults undergo a similar process every year, replacing their worn-out feathers with a newer, more waterproof layer. The most eye-catching version of the king penguin is its melanistic form, which sees ventral feathers jet black instead of white. This species is one of two great penguins and is only surpassed in weight and height by the other species found to the south. The emperor penguin is the largest of all 19 species, standing just over four feet tall, and is also the deepest diver, reaching a recorded maximum depth of over 1,800 feet while it searches for fish, mollusks, and crustaceans. Although the emperor penguin is larger, they are less colorful than their king cousins, who have a more vibrant patch of orange towards the back of the head, which runs down the neckline and fades onto the chest. Breeding takes place once yearly, commencing in March and April, after a long period spent at sea foraging for food. This coincides with the beginning of Antarctica's harsh weather conditions, which can witness temperatures as low as minus 50 degrees centigrade and winds as high as 200 kilometers per hour. A single egg is laid by the female in May or June, which is immediately incubated by the male using a patch of skin on his belly and his fat stores to withstand the cold, while the female takes on the equally arduous task of trekking up to 160 kilometers over the sea ice back to the ocean to find food. It is thought that this species breeds during these harsh conditions to give their chicks the best possible chance of surviving, reaching independence at the end of the summer season when their down feathers have molted and they are ready to fend for themselves. The emperor penguin also displays one of the best examples of tobogganing, a type of terrestrial locomotion used to take advantage of the icy conditions. The emperor is one of only two penguin species to call the frozen continent their true home, but one of five that frequent the shores of Antarctica. The first of these birds is the gentoo penguin, which can be distinguished by a red beak, a white patch that runs from eye to eye across the top of the head, and particularly vibrant orange-red feet. 
Like other species, they occasionally exhibit leucism and other color aberrations, which can produce an entirely white plumage or more of a faded brown coloration. While some gentoos breed in Antarctica, others frequent sub-Antarctic islands further north to build their nests. These are constructed either with vegetation such as grass or rocks depending on the environment and available materials. This species lays between one to three eggs on a yearly cycle, and after a hundred days of nurturing, the young reach independence, but won't reach sexual maturity until two to three years of age. Weighing no more than 19 pounds, although gentoos are smaller than the great penguins previously discussed, they hold the record for the fastest underwater birds, clocking speeds of up to 36 kilometers per hour which for the sake of comparison is four times the speed of Michael Phelps. Penguins use a type of aquatic locomotion referred to as porpoising, which sees groups of birds breaching the surface in a smooth, efficient motion to take in air. Gentoos can often be seen alongside our next species, chinstrap penguins, the second and smallest of the brush-tailed penguins. As you might expect, this species can be easily identified by a black line of feathers that runs from ear to ear underneath the beak, in addition to a black ring around the eye and a black beak. The chinstrap's claim to fame is the largest breeding colony of any penguin, with over one million birds residing on Zavadovsky Island, one of the South Sandwich Islands that sits just over 500 kilometers southeast of South Georgia. These birds are known to scramble to the highest slopes, which are the first to become free of the sea ice. Like most species, chinstraps lay two eggs, which the parents take turns incubating while the other forages for food, which can be up to 95% krill. This food is then regurgitated for the chick to eat. Once molting is complete, chicks are ready to fend for themselves in the open ocean. Both chinstraps and gentoos are closely related to one more species, the final member of the brush-tailed group. The Adeli penguin is characterized by its jet black hood with a small ring of white feathers around the eyes. These rings are not present in juveniles who exhibit an entirely black-gray plumage that shifts to adult coloration with age. It is another species which can occasionally be found in leucistic and brown aberrations. Like all penguins, Adelis use a type of camouflage known as countershading. In the water, the dark feathers on the dorsal side make them hard to spot from above, blending into the depths of the ocean, and their white ventral side makes them harder to see from below, blending into the sunlight above. It is another species which subsists on the abundant supply of krill in the Antarctic waters and on the other side of the food chain are preyed upon by several animals including killer whales and leopard seals. The Adelie penguin is the second species alongside the emperor to exist primarily on the Antarctic continent but can also be found on a few sub-Antarctic islands, one of which bridges the gap nicely to the only species to breed in the African continent. The African penguin is the first species we'll discuss from a genus commonly referred to as the banded penguins. Their feather pattern is unique from other groups, displaying bands of white and black feathers along the sides of the body and head and onto the top of the chest. Also referred to as the cape penguin or the jackass penguin for their donkey-like courting vocalizations. This species can be found in the beautiful clear blue waters of Southern Africa from Namibia in the north to South Africa in the south. Aside from their beautiful surroundings, African penguins are unique from those previously discussed in the construction of their nests, which are built in the form of shallow burrows dug into the sand, or can also be made in a similar fashion using areas of vegetation or a simple depression in the sand. In order to keep their feathers clean and waterproof, all penguins engage in a behavior known as preening, where they use their beaks to apply an oil secreted from a gland at the base of the tail to the rest of their body. The African penguin is unfortunately the first species we've covered that is listed as endangered, a conservation status shared with another banded penguin found on the equator. The bands of the Galapagos penguin are the least prominent of all banded penguins, and they are also the smallest of this group, topping out at just under six pounds. These smaller penguins are no less impressive in the water 
and use their flippers to propel their aerodynamic bodies through the water in pursuit of prey at speeds of up to 35 kilometers per hour. The Galapagos Islands is one of the most renowned locations for marine life and the penguins here hunt anchovies, sardines and mullet, all of which are referred to as cold water schooling fish. They are preyed upon by various species of seal and shark in the water and are also vulnerable to birds of prey, snakes and mammals such as feral cats and dogs on land. The Galapagos is the most northerly species of penguin and by a small margin the only species to exist in the northern hemisphere with the northernmost tip of their range straddling the equator. It is able to survive in these northerly waters thanks to a current system known as the Humboldt Current which transports cool water from Antarctica up the west coast of South America and after which the next species is named. The Humboldt penguin is visually more similar to the African penguin than it is to the Galapagos, but has a larger area of pink flesh which extends to the base of the beak and has a thinner white line of feathers on the side of its face. At up to 11 pounds, it is larger than both its African and equatorial equivalents. This species has an unusual breeding season which takes place year round but peaks between April to July and August to December. This often means many Humboldt penguins can successfully breed twice per year. This species is also quite unique from most other penguins in that they do not form creches, rather penguins leave their chicks by the nest while they forage for food. To assist with this foraging, all penguins have rows of pronounced teeth-like papillae which face towards the back of the mouth and help the penguin grip fish and direct it into their bellies instead of slipping out in the opposite direction. The Humboldt penguin is present along the west coast of South America, from Peru in the north to Chile in the south, where its range overlaps with the last banded species to explore. The Magellanic penguin is a little larger than other banded penguins and has a feather pattern most similar to the African penguin with a large white band of feathers on the side of the head and a smaller area of pink flesh around and on top of the eyes. It can be distinguished from the African penguin by the presence of an additional black band around the neckline. This species is named after Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, after which the Strait of Magellan is also named and located in the same area. This is one species for which I was able to find photos of a true albino penguin. This coloration differs from that of a leucistic penguin by the lack of pigmentation in the beak, skin and eyes. Like the African penguin, Magellanics nest in burrows, but they are often dug into soil in the grassland habitats they use for breeding. Like most penguin species, Magellanics are monogamous and mate with the same partner for many years. There are several other species that breed on the South American continent all of which boast spectacular hairstyles. The macaroni is the first of seven penguins we'll explore in a genus referred to as crested penguins. This entire group is characterized by a colorful tuft of feathers on their head, known as a crest, in addition to a vibrant red beak. Interestingly, this specific species is named after a style of mid 18th century men's fashion that saw men dress flamboyantly and finished off with a fancy wig. The macaroni penguin is another species found in large colonies on Zavadovsky Island where they breed in late October and construct their nests which amount to simple scrapes in the ground. After roughly 35 days of incubation, the male broods the young while the female hunts and returns each day with fresh food. With over 12 million breeding pairs, the macaroni penguin is the most numerous species and is the fifth and final species to breed in Antarctica. The royal penguin is considered by some to be a colomorph or subspecies of macaroni, although it is recognized by both the IUCN and BirdLife International as a distinct species. Regardless, although this penguin shares the same style crest, it can be distinguished by its white face in comparison to the dark face of the macaroni. Both species weigh no more than 13 pounds and top out at roughly 28 inches. The royal penguin breeds exclusively on Macquarie Island, where there are estimated to be close to 1 million breeding pairs that can be positioned up to 1.6 kilometers from the shore. 
They share this island with three other species of penguin, all of which are preyed upon by the southern elephant seal, which appear to be much less of a threat on land, including king penguins, gentoos, and our next species of crested penguin. The rockhopper is another bird with a species status that has changed over the years, but is now recognized as two distinct species, the northern and southern rockhopper, with the latter further divided into two subspecies, the eastern and western rockhopper. The two species can be distinguished by their size and the length of their crest, with the northern rockhopper being slightly larger and sporting longer crest feathers. As the name suggests, these penguins are known for their agility in relation to navigating the rocky shorelines they inhabit, which applies both when traveling downhill and perhaps more impressively when traveling uphill as well. Like many species, chicks, which display a soft brown plumage, are vulnerable to other species of birds, including the giant petrel, who prey upon chicks separated from the safety of the colony. In the waters just south of New Zealand, the aquatic range of the eastern rockhopper overlaps with that of another crested species and the only penguin to breed on Snares Island. Snares penguin is named after this beautiful island on which it breeds in colonies of up to 1,500 pairs. Before breeding commences in August, this species spends around four months at sea hunting for fish, which they do so at speeds of up to 24 kilometers per hour. Snares penguin was considered a subspecies of the Fjordland penguin, but is now recognized as a distinct species and is identified by the presence of an area of bare skin that surrounds the base of the beak. The Fjordland penguin lacks this patch of bare skin, but can equal if not surpass the snares penguin in the beauty of its breeding grounds, for it is named after New Zealand's spectacular Fjordland region. This species is also a little taller, standing around 22 inches, and can be distinguished from our final crested species by the presence of white feathers on its cheeks. The erect crested penguin lacks this cheek coloration and also lacks the area of flesh at the base of its beak, distinguishing it from the snares penguin. However, what this species lacks in facial coloration, it makes up for in height, standing ever so slightly taller than its colorful counterparts at 26 inches. Breeding season is a little later than the snares penguin, commencing in September, and once born, its chicks sport a fluffy light brown plumage, which molts into their waterproof adult feathers and spectacular hairpiece. This species now breeds only on New Zealand's Antipodes and Bounty Islands, but used to breed on mainland New Zealand along with its miniature cousin. The adorable little penguin is aptly named, and is by far the smallest species, weighing under half the weight of the Galapagos penguin at no more than 2.6 pounds, and on average stands just under one foot tall. Also known as the blue penguin or fairy penguin, in addition to its small stature, it is also characterized by a pale blue plumage on the dorsal side. It is another species that nests in burrows, dug either under vegetation or in the sand, and breed once per year from June to December. This bird is currently listed as a single species by both BirdLife International and the IUCN. However, two recent studies in 2017 and 2019 have suggested that one of the subspecies, named the Australian little penguin, is both morphologically and genetically distinct enough to be recognized as a separate species. The original species is found only in New Zealand, whereas the proposed Australian little penguin is located both in Australia and on the south coast of New Zealand, where its range overlaps slightly with our final species found in its own monotypic genus. The yellow-eyed penguin is characterized, of course, by its yellow eyes, but also by a set of yellow feathers on the head that are most prominent in a band that stretches from eye to eye around the back of the head. This species also exhibits bright pink feet and is not only unique in appearance, but also in its mating behavior. In addition to an abnormally long breeding season running from August to March, this bird is not particularly social and will build its nest out of sight of other breeding pairs. The nest is usually concealed under dense vegetation and is most often categorized as a scrape lined with twigs and other vegetation. 
The scrape nest is used by many birds and is one of the 13 types of bird nest, all of which you can learn about in this video, which features over 30 examples from different species. Thank you so much for watching.